All righty, greetings everyone. Happy New Year. Yeah, I hope everybody had a nice winter break. Um, I did. I managed to do some all, all of those Christmassy things, and I even managed to catch up on a few of the Christmas movies. Uh, of course, Home Alone and National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. Um, and Die Hard, so stop the debate, folks. It is a Christmas movie. Um, and Bill Murray's classic, of course, Scrooged. I try to watch these every year. It's, it's just a bit of a habit. And I mention them because I want to talk about another Bill Murray movie. The movie is called Groundhog Day. Now, maybe some of you are too young to know about this Bill Murray classic, so I'm going to catch you up. But don't worry too much. Uh, there's no need for me to give a spoiler alert announcement. It's just the basics. So here we go. Meet Phil. Phil is the character who's played by Bill Murray. Phil is a television weatherman who is sent to cover the Groundhog Day Festival, which happens every year. It's a real thing. It happens every year on February the 2nd. So it's coming up. So it's current. It's a fun ceremony and it involve, involves seeing whether a groundhog will come out of its burrow and signify the end of winter. It's quite an event, but Phil doesn't think so. In fact, he shows contempt for the whole thing and for the people, for the whole experience. But when he goes to leave, a snowstorm forces him and his news team to stay another night in the town. And when... The clock clicks over to 6 a.m. No Phil wakes up and he finds that this day is exactly like the day before. Somehow he's stuck in a time loop. At first he's confused and he thinks he's gone mad. But when the day starts over with exactly the same, the same events, he realises that 6 a.m. starts February the 2nd, over and over and over. Of course, the realization of this monotony is a little frustrating. Oh, nice. <laughs> I've had days like that. So fast forward and eventually Phil starts to become familiar with the behaviour patterns of the other characters who live in the town. And at first he uses this knowledge for his own benefit, but after many, many restarted days, he changes from trying to manipulate the patterns of others to attempting to become the best version of himself. Eventually, this catalyst of self-improvement breaks the daily cycle, and Phil, well, actually, that really would be a spoiler, so let's just say that they live happily ever after. So, why do I feel compelled to share this with you? Well, as I contemplated the theme of the conference and the fact that we are now in 2017, I got to thinking and my mind started going, and, and that's the dangerous part, right, when your mind just goes away. So I was born in 1962. I'm 56, for those of you who are trying to do the math, so stay focused, all right? Okay, so I started school in 1967 and I began teaching in 1984. So that's about 52 years of education and 35 of those as a teacher. So at 190 student days a year as a teacher, I dragged out the abacus, and that's around about 6,650 days. 6,650 days of iron shirts, 6,500 days of school lunches, 6,500 days of coming in through that front gate and then not being able to leave until the bell tells me to. So no wonder a movie like Groundhog Day is going to start to press some buttons. So I've taken some time to think about this and to, and to think about our role as teachers and leaders and learners and mentors and tutors. And here's what I'd like to share. Oh, sorry, 1962. Flip. 1962, also a great day for movie, a great year for movies. Um, and also, Thomas, very good, movie, uh, very good year for uh, music as well. 
All right, here's what I want to share. It's easy to get into a routine and lose sight of the long game. It's easy to pull out resources from last year and to slip into semester two thinking. It's easy to repeat patterns. It's comfortable and we justify it by saying that we're getting better at the delivery of our content. It's rewarding because we can claim to become curriculum experts. It's easy to get stuck into a pigeon box and say, I teach grade eight math or I'm a diploma English teacher. It's comfortable when we set, set in place structures and resources that fit with our own way of thinking and our own pedagogical preferences. It's compliant to follow the traditional structures of our set curriculum. And somehow, it's seen as collaborative when we agree to work as a team, even when we know it squashes our desire, our, our opportunity to become the teachers and leaders that we know that we can be. The bottom line is, it's easy for all of us, regardless of what age we are, to slip into Groundhog Day existence without even realizing it. But how different would our world be if we continually looked outside of our comfort zone? Well, that's a little bit unfair, isn't it? I mean, after all, we're here at a conference on a Sunday morning. But you know what that means? That means that we already are looking at things a little bit differently. Like Phil, we've already woken up and acknowledged that by changing me, I change my world. In Groundhog Day, Phil repeated his day over and over and over. But he only truly started to be connected to the other char characters and to his inner joy when he moved away from what's in it for me and towards how can I help. So right now, you're here at an EdTech conference. Yesterday and today, there were some great workshops. And look around you when the lights come on. You are surrounded by fantastic teachers and leaders and innovators from other schools. And you have the opportunity to learn from them and to teach them and to create networks of relationships that will structure change for you and for your students and for your school community. On Monday, you'll go back to school, but you won't be the same person. Simply by attending this conference, you have changed. You may have had your ideas validated. You may have picked up new strategies and new resources. You may have met new people to bounce ideas off, and you may have some new movies on your to-do list. Monday will be different. And while you may see that the behavior of others is routine and predictable, it's okay. Our role is to be the catalyst and to help by modeling a new way of thinking, behaving and interacting and to ignite a community of innovation and authentic learning as we go about our daily practices as agents of change.